Hello, hello. Yes, live rock. I bet you didn't see this one coming. It was a question that you had in one of my videos regarding is it possible to force dendrobium keikis in order to save a struggling plant or force them just to get more out of the plant. So thank you for clicking on this video if this is a subject that would interest you because it got me thinking about the subject of keikis and can we force them? Can we make a dendrobium produce keikis because we can do something, interfere in such a way that we will get keikis? So I'm going to say a quick answer to that question. The answer is yes, but why would you want to do that? Because if you're forcing a keiki out of a dendrobium, then you have to put it into stress. And I don't think we grow our orchids to put them into stress in order to get keikis. A stress situation is, for example, here on my dendrobium aphyllum, the sticks that we are looking at right now. If I were to cut off one of the canes here, even an older cane that has bloomed, that cane is now detached from the mother plant. And we have a problem. The orchid has a problem. That cane will want to survive and it will push out a keiki. But if you have a healthy orchid, then of course you don't want to put your orchid under stress. But you will still get keikis. And that is a natural evolution of the orchid. That some will push out keikis just because that's how they behave. It doesn't have to be a stress factor because if the plant is healthy, Please do not mind my little splints here. It's still a healthy plant. That was a winter storm. I needed to intervene before I lost the canes. But the plant otherwise is healthy. They will also produce keiki because that is a good sign if they produce keikis. Because they have enough energy not only to flower. See all the nubbins coming here. But also to produce keikis. So they have enough storage to do both. So that in a way is a good thing. But again, if you wanted to force a keiki on this dendrobium, then you would have to cut off a cane and stress that part in such a way that it is detached from the mother plant. It has no supply of nutrients or energy. And all of a sudden that stress will trigger a keiki. I'm going to go and show you some other examples just to give you an idea as to a natural attribute in a dendrobium and a stress attribute. Here is my dendrobium nobili no ID. It's a complex hybrid. There's nothing super special about this one, except that eventually soon it's going to come into bloom. So this one has had a keiki production phase and that is stress orientated. It normally doesn't produce keikis and I will get to say normally just now. The keikis that it produced in its first year with me was because it was right new out of the nursery. And then in my first season it was under stress. Its perfect environment was taken away from it. It was put into my environment which it didn't know. It had to get used to it and it was under stress. So it produced keikis, five of them in my first year. I did get blooms as well, but treating a dendrobium nobly, people say that if the nubbins are at this stage and or this stage, like back here, like that, if you start fertilizing now, those nubbins will switch from becoming blooms to becoming keikis because there is an excess supply of nutrients and it's going to kick into full-on growth mode. There's also a reason why people say do not water this orchid for a specific amount of time so that you can induce blooms because of the canes in experiencing a certain amount of stress. The blooms are the reproductive organs, the orchid wants to survive, so it's going to bloom in order to reproduce and survive. So I don't quite buy into that, not with these complex hybrids. 
With a species, that could be something else, but I have no experience with a species. I'm just talking about these complex hybrids. If the orchid wants to survive and it's under stress, it chucks out keikis. That is its first port of call for survival. There is no guarantee that the blooms are going to be pollinated to produce seed to then survive because that draws a lot of strength from the canes. Blooming, pollination, seed pod. It's easier for the orchid to survive under a very stressful situation by chucking out keikis. So do you want to force a keiki on a Dendrobium nobili? If you have a healthy orchid, I would just assume that we are growing these orchids for the blooms. So why would you want to put it under stress in order to get keikis unless you have a struggling orchid? And then by the nature of its design, when it is under stress, it will produce keikis of its own. If there is any form of uncertainty, then you can always nip off an old cane, place it on some damp sphagnum moss, or like I would in my case, hop filter, and eventually a keiki will pre be produced even from nubbins that have bloomed. These orchids are survival geniuses. So if you want to force a keiki on a nobili that is healthy, I would just say, well, maybe that is your own curiosity. I don't believe that added fertilizer is going to change anything from when there is a nubbin immature like that, and then it'll become a keiki. Added fertilizer is just a good thing for the time being when it comes into active growth and when the nubbins push out and become buds just to help it along a little bit. Forcing a keiki on an orchid like this, it would have to be put under a serious amount of stress that could also include withholding fertilizer and stopping the watering. Let's go to the Barioda. Same thing. This orchid has a nature in its own right to produce keikis. Whether you fertilize or you don't fertilize, whatever culture you give it, it is going to produce keikis. That is the nature of the beast of this orchid. Personally, I love it. Can you influence how many keikis you get in a specific Barioda, for example, by adding more fertilizer or not? I don't think so. I just think that the genetic makeup of the Barioda is such that it's going to produce at least, depending on the size of the orchid, let's say four keikis per year. Because I fertilize this orchid all year round. It never is without fertilizer because it never actually does stop doing something. It's either growing actively or it's pushing spikes and blooms. So summer through winter, it gets fertilized. In the winter, yes, I drop the fertilizer a little bit, but not by much because it is such a big orchid in my case. And yet I have never had more keikis or less keikis in any given year that I've had this orchid. I've always had around four to five. Some I have harvested and some I have kept on, especially this one, which is a keiki, but in a flower spike form, which is now producing roots. And it's not ready to be harvested. First of all, I would like to see it bloom. If it's going to be a spike, I want to see it. And secondly, I have to wait for a new growth before I even consider taking it off. But you can see it's already producing its own roots. Here's another keiki that has also got spikes on it. So can you force a keiki on a Dendrobium berryoda, mature, healthy plant? Uh, I would say you don't have to. They're going to do it of their own accord. What you can do, however, is take off a keiki. And this is an example of it is stressed. This is a keiki that has lost all its leaves. It was stressed, has absolutely no sustenance through the roots. But look at it, because of the stress, it's going to push out another little nubbin. Will it have enough strength to become a full-fledged plant and produce roots of its own accord? I think so. It'll be a lot of years before it blooms, but this is a keiki that is stressed. And let's just say that this is a cane of any dendrobium that is stressed, and it will produce a keiki. So you see where I'm going with all of this. 
If you want a dendrobium to produce keikis and you want to force them to do so, either to propagate or because you've got an orchid that's going downhill, the stressed canes will produce keikis. The question then is, will they survive long enough for those keikis to develop on a stressed cane? Do they get enough nutrition from the cane to then produce and become their own mother plant? That is another question altogether, and that is a case of a separate situation in every, every example. Just making sure my aphids here are not taking overhand. All right, hibiki is another classic example. It needs fertilizer in my climate all year round. It's either blooming or growing or blooming still, and it will produce keikis. So this is not a question of, am I adding fertilizer in order to produce keikis? It is in the nature of the plant that it will produce keikis. As long as you have a healthy plant and that you see that it's actively growing and you're applying the fertilizer as you normally would, and then it blooms as it normally should, it will also produce keikis. That doesn't mean that the orchid is stressed. That only means it's in the nature of doing so. So in this pot, for example, I believe I have two pieces of hibiki, which I have not separated. I prefer to have a healthy root ball instead of always tearing things apart. Here, I would normally get like four or maybe also five keikis in total. It depends which plant does it, but let's just say out of this pot, four or five keikis in total per year, every year that I've had it. And that is not me changing the fertilizer. That is not the orchid in stress. It's in the nature of this orchid to do what it does. So that is also something to bear in mind, understanding the attributes of your orchids to know, is it stressed? Is it that's why it's pu pushing out keikis? What am I doing wrong? save the keikis or is it just the nature of the orchid that produces keikis because that's how it grows that's how it propagates itself now let's look at an example of a very stressed cane of dendrobium tangerinum this one was headed for the bin after a couple of years of not doing much and not working well for me and then i was carrying it to the bin and i saw two little green nubbins that once one day they were actually becoming three but only two survived this is how i'm trying to now propagate this tangerinum because it had nubbins and then all of a sudden it went not from into the bin but it went into the setup of high humidity to maintain its little microclimate here so that the roots don't dry out and eventually I could have mature plants. But here's an example of a stressed dendrobium trying to survive without any intervention on my part. It was just dying and it was in dire need of survival. So that is why I'm saying if you want to have an orchid that propagates into keikis, cut the canes, put stress on them, and then they'll fight back. The question here now, is there any energy left in this main cane here to actually do something with these two little growths? So once you have keikis and they are not able to live on their own accord, and you can see definitely they are not ready to come off by any means, will they have enough strength in order to become plants in their own right. And this is how I help them to stay in their own little bubble here. This hob material is wet with RO water to create a nice humid environment around there because those roots are still viable. My guess here is the cane is depleted, but we shall see now if this is going to work. So if you want to force a keiki, put your orchid under stress. If you don't want to put an orchid under stress because it is healthy and growing happily and it produces keikis, then understand that is the norm of its growth habit. If you get a healthy orchid and it continues to stay healthy and then it just all it does is produce keikis while it is with you in the first year, that is a sign of stress 
but at least it's growing keikis and you can propagate and save the orchid that way. Doesn't mean that the mother plant will die off, but it's just figuring itself out in the environment that it is now having to get accustomed to. If you want to force a keiki, put your orchid under stress. And if your dendrobium is already under stress, then leave that in a humid environment in order for it to somehow get some air around it and not desiccate the canes too much, too quickly. And then normally a dendrobium will push out a nubbin that could become another plant if there is enough sustenance in the cane. So Live Rock 62, that question of yours was super interesting. I've been mulling around with it in my head for quite some time, trying to put into words what I'm thinking. And I just hope that that inspired a little bit to think if that's what you need to be doing with your orchid. And then hopefully how to get them through. There are never guarantees. It all depends on the strength of the cane that is left. But it is worth a try if that is the situation you find yourself in. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Let me know your experience with keikis in the comments below. Do you have other examples? I would really appreciate it. I would like to know. Meanwhile, I am not opposed to keikis. I love them. I think they're funky. And I enjoy being able to pull them off and see them grow into their own little plants when new growths come. And I'll do a video about that in another time because I have some updates to make. But in the meantime, have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.